Hey guys, it's been a little over a year since I've made my very first video on this channel. So I thought it would be fitting to sit down with you all and go over, am I still using the same products, implementing the same strategies as I was in that very first video to help Teddy with his collapsing trachea. So stay tuned and we will talk about it. guys I just wanted to quickly apologize for the audio issues in this video I didn't realize that the movie that my husband is watching in the front room would be so loud and that my phone's microphone would pick it up so really sorry but I didn't want to reshoot it because I felt like it was really good information and I did a good job so I tried to ignore that <laughs> and just watch the video okay bye okay so am I still using the same products and doing all the same things that I talked about in my very first video. And the answer is, well, we're gonna go through it step by step because um, what fun would that be if I just gave it all away? All right, so um, some of the things that I talked about in the very first video, I don't actually have with me right now because they're upstairs, um, not a big deal though. So I talked about um, an air purifier. Do I still use it? Do I think it helps? Yes, absolutely. Do I use it every day? No. Um, it kind of just depends on uh, whether or not I've cleaned that day. Maybe I've done some dusting and I feel like there's dust floating around the air. If that's the case, I'll turn it on for an hour or two. Um, if it's the time of year when there happen to be like a lot of allergens, like pollen blowing around um, like midsummer, and I feel like he's coughing or something like that, I will turn it on then too. But it's not an everyday thing and it really doesn't need to be. Um, it's just kind of, you know, whatever your dog needs. The other um, like appliance thing that I talked about was a humidifier. Do I still use that? The answer is also yes. Um, do I use it all the time? Again, no, it's just as needed. Some other strategies that I talked about were uh, walking your dog, making sure that you do continue to keep him or her exercised. And yes, Teddy and I do that. And we actually do it more often, which is so awesome. I, I'm in love with the fact that um, Teddy is aging so gracefully and he still enjoys a daily walk. And do we still use the harness that I mentioned in the very first video? And the answer is also yes. So this is the Gooby brand harness. I found this on Amazon and I'm just going to briefly talk about it again because this is probably one of the, the more important things that I mentioned that um, I really want to get across to everyone that this works. So please, please try this. Um, the harness is made and stitched together in a V shape. So his neck goes in here and you can see that that V shape perfectly gives some relief to his throat. Oh, Ted, you're supposed to be in the video, bud. Oh well, he's right there. But the way it's shaped, it creates that little space for his windpipe to sit in. So if he happens to be pulling or whatever, he does not choke with this. And that's what um, the brand Gooby, they advertise on their website. It, it's a no choke harness and really works. Very much recommend this product. Okay, um, the other thing I talked about was avoiding super cold weather and also really hot weather. Obviously that's a no-brainer. Um, yes, of course we do. Um, why? Because I'm not gonna have a Pekingese who, he's a brachiocephalic dog. That means he's just a very short muscle. To begin with, I'm not gonna have him outside walking in the heat of the day when it's 90 degrees outside or, you know, on the other hand, when it's zero degrees outside. That's a given. So if your dog is dealing with collapsing trachea, please don't do that. Be smart. Okay. Um, this next thing we're going to talk about is a big one because whenever you mention a product in a video, I think people kind of get hung up on it a little bit. They're like, oh, product. It's like that thing, like a pill will fix me kind of a thing. Um, yes, this is a great product. Don't get me wrong. But I want to make sure that you guys realize that 
it's all of these things combined that made the difference in Teddy. It's not just this one thing, but regardless, I'm going to talk about it. So this is the Pet Wellbeing Throat Gold. Obviously, I still use it. <laughs> um, couple of things on this. So the company actually very recently, as of September 2020, did a reformulation of one of the ingredients. So um, I was noticing, oh, there he is, Ted, he's kind of in the video. <laughs> I was noticing that Teddy was getting a little bloated um, in his belly. Um, I especially noticed that his harness was a little bit uh, harder to, to snap whenever we would go for our walks. Talked to my vet about it. He told me he's just getting older. He's probably just, you know, holding a little weight. Um, so we increased the frequency of our walks. So at the time I was only walking him maybe every other day. On the off days we would play in the yard, play in the house kind of thing. So we've actually been walking every day pretty much since that. But um, I, I like to keep tabs on the ingredients of the supplements that I give my animals. So I called Pet Wellbeing and I was talking to them about the dosing on everything I've been giving Teddy. And they told me that the old formulation had of throat gold had a form of licorice in it that will actually cause water retention in dogs who have a heart condition. So Teddy has a heart murmur. And sure enough, his, um, his body just wasn't able to get rid of the excess fluid that this particular form of licorice um, was causing his body to, to hold water. Um, sorry if that didn't make sense. I think it did. <laughs> okay, so anyway, the old formulation had a form of licorice in it that caused some water retention. This new formulation does not. So. I'm able to dose Teddy with the full dose of throat gold, no issues, no water retention, no nothing. So I'm very happy about that. And that just really speaks volumes to this company that they paid attention to something like that. To know that dogs with a heart condition like Teddy and his breed do have issues with coughing. I mean, they kind of go hand in hand. So you would think, you know, hey, maybe we should make sure that our formula is suitable for a dog with a heart condition and sure enough they did it um so awesome you know that's why i really 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 recommend this um seriously it's so good now um is this the be all end all no like i said before it's a combination of everything that you're doing everything that you're giving your animal that really makes a difference but oh my gosh this helps a lot now sometimes the coughing gets really bad right? You guys know that. That's why you're watching this video. Um, sometimes throat gold is not enough. So what do I do? I grab a bottle of children's Robitussin, okay? And I give Teddy about 0.75 to 1 ml of that in a baby dropper in his mouth. So check with my vet on that. Um, he's totally okay with it. It's not something I do all the time. In fact, it's very, very rare. I would say in the past year, I have probably given him Robitussin four times. Like once every three to four months is when the coughing will get that bad that I feel the need to do that. Um, but it's a good thing to kind of keep in your toolbox for your animals to know that, hey, if it gets really bad, I can give this, okay? Um, check with your vet on the dosing for your dog's weight, okay? Teddy's about 13 pounds, so he can have about one ml of that Robitussin. So um, again, I don't give it all the time. Um, it's it's really just, you know, when things are getting a little, a little rough for him. Um, the other thing I, I didn't really talk a whole lot about in the first video that I feel like I should now is the importance of keeping your dog's weight at an appropriate amount. Oh, hang on here. We have a visitor. Woo! <laughs> Sylvester. Um, so I just mentioned Teddy is 13 pounds. That is a perfect weight for him. 
he is now 14 years old and um, he's pretty much weighed somewhere between 12 and a half and 13 and a half pounds for uh, pretty much the entirety of his adult life. Perfect weight for him. He has good muscling, all that jazz. If your dog is overweight, just like in people, when people are overweight, when they go to exercise and they exert themselves, that extra weight really puts a strain on their ability to breathe. So just think about that. If your dog has some extra weight they're carrying around and they have a coughing issue, you wanna make sure that they're able to breathe and breathe well. And a great way to help them breathe well is to keep the weight down. So Teddy is fed a homemade diet um, appropriate amount for his weight. I know now everyone can do that and it's totally okay. Um, you, if you're feeding kibble, just make sure you're feeding the right amount. And, you know, I, I know we want to show and express our love for these animals and we love to give treats. That's a great way to express our affection. But, you know, it's the whole killing them with kindness thing. Like, try to reel that in a little bit if that's an issue for you and your animal. Um, I know it's tough, but, uh, you know, think of it this way, like, if, you know, uh, for like a reward-based system, you know, maybe playing with a toy would be a better option than giving a cookie. So think of it that way, you know, rewards come in many forms, not just food. Even, you know, just petting and scratching and giving that kind of affection to can be just as valuable. So, food for thought there. <laughs> We're just watching like Sylvester like walking on the feet. Um, okay guys, so I think I covered everything and I actually added two a little bit from the first video. So Sylvester's being super affectionate so he can be in the video now. Um, I hope that was very helpful for you guys. Um, a lot of people commented on that video. I think I'm up to like 15,000 views now, which is kind of crazy. That's exciting. Um, and who knows, you know, a year from now, we'll have to watch back and on this video and we'll see where the first video is at. But uh, a lot of people seem to find that it was helpful. Um, again, just please remember, it's not the one thing, it's all of the things working together. And always speak with your vet to check and make sure that everything I said is something that they agree with. But um, all right, hope that helps guys. Um, you can definitely help your, your babies if they're having some tracheal issues. All right, talk to you soon. Peace.